Hey guys, uh, Jeff here. I uh, wanted to share a couple stories of some uh, issues I've had with predators and chickens and also some stories about keeping your or some information about keeping your chickens alive during the winter uh, especially if you live up north and it's real cold during the winter um, so I'm gonna get started by talking a little bit about uh, uh, some of the predators that we have seem to run into a lot out here uh, I live in uh, the Lakes region of New Hampshire and I'm originally from upstate New York and I've had and, and kept chickens in both of these locations and there's quite a difference. As far as like the winter goes, the weather is probably similar, but as far as the predators, there's a lot of differences in the things that we run into in New Hampshire than what we run into in New York. So when I was in New York, we lived and we were surrounded by fields. So occasionally we would get a coyote or a fox running through and possibly taking a chicken out. And uh, we would, you'd have the telltale sign of a pile of feathers on the ground. It's a, a defense mechanism that the chickens use when they're um, attacked is they just instantly, they drop a whole bunch of their feathers um, to, in the hopes of being released. Uh, but, you know, the coyotes and foxes are pretty good. They, they grab the chickens, they take them off into the weeds uh, or into the woods and they're gone. So out here in New Hampshire, uh, there's no exception. We, we have coyotes, we have foxes, we have owls and hawks and weasels. Um, and then of course you have the cold from the winter. So the first, uh, the first story I'll tell you about actually happened uh, a few weeks ago. We had we have two chicken coops. One is a small one, and one's a little bit bigger, and we have most of our chickens in that one. Uh, we cur At the time, we had two silky purebred uh, chickens in the small coop, and it was completely sealed off. Uh, the chickens don't go out. They're kept in there 24 hours a day. It's, uh, it's the middle of winter, deep winter. Uh, it's cold, and they're, they're not going to find anything out in the chicken run or walking around in the yard anyways. So we just keep them in there, we keep their water fresh, and we keep food in their, in their feeder. So what happened was uh, my boys are, one of their chores is in the mornings they go out and they take care of the chickens. Uh, they let out the chickens that are allowed to free range and then they feed the other ones. So they came in one day and they said the, ch the two silkies are dead. And uh, so I had gone outside and I took a look and sure enough they were dead and it was pretty disappointing. Um, I looked around the coop and I was trying to figure out what what could have happened. You know, I envisioned the, you know, the door being torn off or something, but no, it, the door was closed. Uh, the only thing that I could think of that might have gotten in there based on the, the uh, the terror, the, the whatever got in there, which I know was a weasel at this point, um, it had bitten it, the chicken's neck and kind of did a lot of damage to the back of their skulls. And of course, I do an online search, and that is kind of what weasels do. So, and it left them, but not that not that it could get any of those chickens out. So, <clears throat> at this point, I realize I have a weasel problem. Uh, I had walked around, and the only thing that I could find on the coop that seems like a possible entry is the corrugated roofing. Uh, it's plastic corrugated roofing, uh, which you can see right behind me here, and it has little gaps at the base and around the edges where I think the weasel must have got in. So, long story short, they, they had uh, gotten killed by the weasel and now I'm I have a weasel problem so later that day I had looked out the back window because our uh, kitchen window looks over our backyard which so I can see the chickens and I see the chickens are free-ranging because the boys let them out and three of them are under the big chicken coop and then one of them was kind of off in the snow in the middle of the yard and so I was kind of watching it trying to figure out what it's doing laying down in the snow and I see that there's a weasel attached to it. It was flopping around a little bit and I could see there's a weasel like on the chicken. So I ran downstairs, I ran out and I went up to the weasel and the chicken and I'm trying to swat it off and it looked at me, it didn't seem to care very much that I was there and so I kept swatting at it and uh, finally it decided to run off and it actually ran underneath the small chicken coop. 
which as you can see, it's right on the ground, so I can't see under it. Not to mention we had about eight or 10 inches of snow that day. So I, uh, I go up, I, I have my son stand out here and kind of monitor to make sure it doesn't run away. And I run in the house, I grab my 22 and I come out and I, my son is standing next to the coop and I'm kind of rocking the coop back and forth a little bit, trying to spook it out. And sure enough, it runs out and the, the coop was actually up against this, uh, the chicken run so that they could, all the chickens could go into the run. And it runs across the chicken run and jumps and mid-air it goes right through the chicken wire now that's one inch chicken wire and that's pretty much the smallest they sell you can buy vanity chicken wire online but it's ultra expensive it's not like farm supply store chicken wire um, the vanity chicken wire being like a half an inch or something like that they it's not something you're gonna buy a whole bunch of it's too expensive but uh, one inch chicken wire is pretty common and the weasel had no issue going through it. So now I have a weasel problem and I have a fence, a containment problem. Um, so I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do about all this. And so um, <clears throat> what happens is, or what happened was I had scared the weasel away and <clears throat> he, he hasn't come back to my knowledge, but it did prompt me to do something about the other chicken coop because the big chicken coop also has uh, the same corrugated plastic roofing on it as well as uh, some other you know some other gaps and cracks that uh, a weasel could probably fit through so I knew that I was gonna have to spend some time re repairing this so what I did was I, I actually peeled I peeled off the roofing in the middle of the, the this winter storm that we were having that day and it was like five degrees out and cold and <laughs> I just plopped a piece of plywood on it and then I went around and I sealed up some of the corners with uh, or some of the gaps the ventilation gaps I put some hardware cloth on there just to make sure that nothing gets up there even though that's up off the ground it's uh, you know apparently the weasels can get in that stuff so uh, since then the chickens have been confined to the coop 24 hours a day uh, it's cold out. Uh, they they're not going to find any food out in the yard, so they don't really need to be going out as long as we can keep their their food and water um, in constant supply. So in a little bit, I'm going to talk about how we keep the water thawed out, and then uh, also I want to talk about uh, how you don't want to put a heated bulb in your coop. There's a couple reasons for it, and the worst one obviously is fire danger. But I, but first, let me get to another story. So we had um, we had a uh, day where we we let out the chickens like we normally do. They free range during the day. We go to work. We come home, and then right about the time the sun starts going down, the chickens head back to the coop. Or in our case, they got in this terrible habit of sitting on the railing on the back porch. So we have to walk them down off the porch and stick them into the coop, which is a little annoying. But we you know it's part of taking care of the chickens. So one night, the uh, the boys didn't take care of the chickens like they normally do, and I thought, oh, well, I'll take care of them before I go to bed. Well, guess who didn't take care of them that night? It's this guy. So what happened is, uh, you know, the chickens, they wake up really early. They wake up probably 4 a.m. when the sun just starts getting light on the horizon. They wake up. They're out in the yard. Well, there's other animals in the yard at 4 a.m., like coyotes and foxes and they're they're hanging out in the hedgerow they're just sitting there waiting I swear they're there every day just waiting for an opportunity because whenever we forget to do something they prove to us that they're out there uh, so this day was no exception we I, I got up in the morning and sure enough there was a pile of feathers in the yard and I knew fox or coyote something took off with uh, with a chicken so uh, I I was more diligent about making sure that the chickens are in the coop at night from that point on but also I had I had added a little bit of uh, uh, chicken wire to the top of the run so that it was about six feet high and the the chicken wire was is down against the ground pretty well so I figured that it would be okay for them to be out in the run so uh, one night I the chickens were in the coop and I opened, a, I left the run open so that if they got up in the morning, they could go out and they could walk around in the chicken run. So sure enough, a couple days after that, 
um, I find a, uh, a dead chicken in the run. <laughs> And the chicken was still in the run, um, but then there was a, uh, well, sorry, this one, the chicken was still in the run. It, it looked like it had been torn apart a little bit uh, around its abdomen area and, um, and left there. So I did a search again online, and it seemed like that was a pretty telltale sign of a raccoon. So now I've got a fox, I've got a raccoon, I've got a weasel, I've got it all. And uh, so what I did was I called up a buddy of mine who does wildlife mitigation and I told him what happened. He came over with a couple footholds and we set the footholds where we can tell that something kind of dug its way into the chicken run. Uh, so we set up the footholds there and two days later I wake up in the morning, I look out the uh, back window and there's a raccoon in the foothold. So that kind of the story lines up at this point. So I uh, I just got up, so I, I was making coffee. I had a cup of coffee. Then I look back out the window and to make sure that the raccoon is still there. And it's still there. And there is a black bear standing next to it, looking at it. And, and this raccoon, like, didn't know what to think of that. And it, it was just standing there, like, frozen. And the uh, black bear just kind of looked at it, kind of gave it a sniff, and then it, it ended up taking off. So I, uh, I, I took care of the raccoon, and it was, uh, it was a disappointing day, of course. We lost a chicken, and, and the raccoon is, hasn't returned. We haven't had any issues with the run, primarily because we haven't really been using it all that much. But we did have another instance where... This is a, our what, third story. Uh, we had an instance where we had, uh, I got up in the morning, I opened up the door for the chickens to go into the run. And I wake up pretty early. I'm up around 3 o'clock, 3.30. And I, I got up, I let the chickens out, I made sure they had food and water. And uh, they were out in the run. And a few hours later, I get a message from my wife. And she says, there's a dead chicken in the chicken run. <laughs> I thought, oh, great. And she said, and one's injured, and one's missing. <laughs> like, you got to be kidding me. And this, is, this isn't this is morning. I mean, I was up early when I let the chickens into the run, but I figured that it was early, it was late enough where they would be safe, and they were not safe. Something got in there. And when I came home later that afternoon, I took a look to see what had happened, and it looks like something had, again, burrowed under or dug its way under the fence, got into the chicken run, you know, killed one bird, attacked another bird, and then took a third bird, uh, except it didn't seem like it knew how to get out, because <laughs> there was just there was feathers everywhere, like it had grabbed the chicken and ran all around inside the run trying to figure out how to get out of there. So finally, it figured out how to get out by pulling the fence away from where the fence meets the chicken coop. So it had squeezed its way through this like half inch gap that um, was secured with a piece of pl a piece of, uh, of wood and it was screwed into the side of the chicken coop and somehow it broke that off and it managed to squeeze itself with the chicken out of that hole and then it took off. And uh, I can tell that it was probably a fox because I found some hair or I, I don't know, I guess it would be it's hard to tell if it was a fox or coyote, but I did find some hair, so I know it was some sort of dog predator. Um, and so that, another, another sad story of dead chickens. Um, the, the, one that, the one that got attacked, it did survive for a few days, but then it ended up dying of its injuries, unfortunately. Uh, and which was really sad because that was actually my, my son's favorite chicken. And, uh, you know, that's just, it's how it goes. And, you know, the, the kids have, the kids, unfortunately, have to learn sometimes that, that death happens on a farm. But anyway, um, so my last animal predator story is one that actually happened Sunday. Uh, we, we run a 4-H meeting at our house. So my wife and I try to operate a, a club and, we had people showing up for the meeting, and my son takes his favorite bird, uh, a silver sabrite, and he takes it out of the coop and he walks up by the door. So when people are coming in, he's showing them the bird. And, uh, you know, he's just having fun with the bird. And I guess 
I didn't see it, but I guess the bird flew away from him and flew up on the roof. So I'm in the house trying to conduct a 4-H meeting, and parents are coming in saying, hey, you know, you've got a chicken on your roof, <laughs> which isn't something you hear all the time. But I was like, oh, okay, that, that's great. That'll be fun to try to figure out what to do with that. So right after the meeting, we actually had to leave to go to somewhere else, and we didn't have time to get the chicken off the roof. So we left, we came back probably an hour and a half later, and we didn't see the chicken on the front of the house. And so I'm thinking to myself, great, something probably took it off. It took it, and it's gone, and you know, the boys are going to be sad. And uh, so we walked around to the back of the house, and luckily it was still on the roof. So what we did was we took some chicken feed, and we just kind of sprinkled it on the ground. And the chicken was interested, and it actually flew from the roof. Now, the, the silver sabrites, or the sabrites as a breed, they are pretty decent at flying. They don't fly much, but they can, they can fly pretty well. Uh, so it flew from the roof over to this tree that's right next to the chicken coop. And it was sitting in the tree, and we're staring at it. And out of nowhere, this barred owl comes out of the woods and tries to grab the chicken out of the tree. And, and the chicken just flew away, and it actually flew under our, our porch. And then um, our son ran over, and he got the chicken, and he was holding it. And the owl was still in the tree, and it was just looking at us while well, looking at the chicken. And uh, my, my son's trying to cover it up as he's walking it over to the chicken tube. So he puts the chicken away, and uh, crisis averted. But we, we ended up letting the dog out because he was sitting at the door. He was interested. He was trying to get out for whatever reason. And we let him out, and he's a, a chihuahua, so he's a chihuahua slash weenie dog. And he comes out, and he finds the chicken food, and he's, he's kind of rummaging around on the ground. And uh, this owl has totally got an eye on him. He, he was interested in the dog. I don't, our dog, he's a little bit more beefy. Uh, he's a little bit bigger than the, the weenie dog part of his breed, but uh, that owl, definitely, he was interested. He didn't end up going for him, but uh, it was kind of funny to watch. And then the owl ended up taking off and flying off into the uh, woods, and he, he just kind of sat there, and he kept watching us. Um, but we didn't, we didn't actually suffer a loss from the owl. Um, but it makes you concerned about, you know, predators coming in from the top. Now my chicken run doesn't have a cover on it. At one point I had bought a uh, like this real fine netting that uh, Amazon sells and it was it was like 50 feet for uh, 50 feet by 25 feet and I think it was only 10 bucks but that stuff was such a pain it was a real fine thread and it just got caught up on everything and it, every time a stick landed on it it ripped so I ended up throwing that out and and, and I think what I'm gonna have to do as far as the future project of making a chicken run as uh, my uh, my friend has got a garden in his yard that he has a uh, hardware mesh fence around and he's getting kind of tired of the hardware mesh fence so he's actually gonna take it down and give me the hardware mesh for free it's like 200 feet of mesh for free uh, so I'm really excited about that. That's going to save me a ton of money. I think that 200, a 200-foot 200 roll is probably $100. That's really expensive stuff. So I think I'm going to use the hardware mesh and make a, a fully enclosed run, make sure everything is, uh, is secured and there's no holes and they can't dig under, uh, the animals can't dig under and get to the chickens. I really don't know if I'm going to be doing any more free-ranging. It seems like we lose most of our birds when they're free ranging and I just I'm tired of losing them it's it's disappointing you put all that money into them and you, you that time and then of course you know you you like your birds you like to uh, hang out with them a little bit and the kids love them and it's uh, it's just it's difficult to deal with those losses so I'm thinking one of the projects I'm going to do this spring is going to be a hardware cloth enclosure and uh, and maybe I'll try to make it so I can move it around. I don't know yet. My yard is not exactly flat. Um, I'm kind of on a hill, so there's always going to be issues with um, putting something flat on the ground. But we'll see. Uh, if, I, if I end up doing that, making that uh, enclosure, I'll try to record it and put it up on YouTube so people can see how I did it. But uh, anyways, 
so one of my other projects uh, that, or one of my other um, problems with the winter in particular is uh, keeping your birds uh, watered, keeping their water thawed out, and keeping them from uh, dying of cold. <laughs> now, the the easiest thing, the, the most direct thing I'll say is that I had originally thought that putting a heat lamp in the coop would be a good idea to help keep the water from freezing. I never put it in the coop because I thought the chickens would be cold. Um, I put it in the coop because I thought it would keep, if I directed it right on the water, I thought it would uh, keep it thawed out, which it actually did. It worked quite well. Well, one time we had gone away for the day and uh, we came back and the chickens, although when they're in their coop, they don't seem like they're jumping around a lot. Well, they had apparently jumped around and they we had the uh, heat lamp tied to the roof and they had knocked it down somehow and it landed on the floor and it was still on it didn't break the bulb so it burned a hole in the floor of the chicken coop thank goodness there was no fire and we didn't have any of the chickens die it was a close call so after that it's like no more we can't have these heat bulbs in here. So um, they don't really need it. Like the birds themselves, we're, we're in uh, central New Hampshire and at the coldest it gets to be like negative 20, negative 30 in the deep winter, but that's maybe a few days. But in general, it's like zero to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So it, it it's a big scale and it goes up and down, but it's not like it goes from zero to 32 or 32 to negative 20 overnight. I mean, that doesn't happen. I mean, we, a couple of weeks ago, we had some really strange weather. It was like 65 and then three days later, it was negative 10. So that was really crazy, but that's not typical. And, and during that time, chickens did fine. They, they didn't have any issues. Um, when, when it got to be negative 20, like the, the water heater didn't really do what it's supposed to do, but I mean, it's negative 20, what do you expect? So anyway, um, the chickens, if you don't use a heat bulb, uh, when it starts to get colder, when the nights start getting colder and you start getting closer into uh, you know winter in January, February, their bodies adjust and they do fine in pretty much any weather. The only thing you gotta watch for is you wanna make sure you have ventilation. I've seen people put plastic wrapping all around their coop and around their chicken runs in the wintertime, and I just don't know if that's good, good enough ventilation because uh, the humidity in the chicken coop, uh, if it gets, if it doesn't have good air ventilation, the humidity will actually cause their combs to get frostbite. And, and then people think, well, the birds are freezing to death. It's like, well, it's actually the humidity. It's not. It's not because they're necessarily cold. Um, they can like they can tuck their head into their their down feathers and stay warm when the, if they get real cold, and they do fine. So, just say no to heat bulbs in the winter. Plus, you'll save a lot of money in electricity because those things, 250 watts, those things suck down a lot of energy. But the other thing I wanted to mention was uh, I. I made these little heater, uh, water heaters, and what you do is you put, I have plastic waters, which I'll show you in a minute, but you, uh, you take a, like a pie tin or a uh, cookie tin, and you can get a little bulb, like uh, I went to Home Depot, I picked up a landscape bulb, or a landscape um, light fixture, it's got like a little spike on it, and I guess it's for spiking it into the ground. Uh, I just took the spike off because it wouldn't fit into the cookie tin and I cut a little hole in the cookie tin to look for the wire and I put this little light bulb inside the cookie tin and that's all it took. The, the water stays thawed out uh, all winter except for when it's negative 20 but it works perfectly and it's a 60 watt light bulb. It's got to be an incandescent incandescent light bulb because uh, those fluorescent light bulbs and the LEDs they don't put off any heat uh, so you got to have the incandescent but they'll last, you know, 30 days. I'm, what are light bulbs? Like $3 for a, a four pack. So uh, it's a lot more efficient than trying to do it with the heat bulb. I don't know what I was thinking. I certainly wouldn't do it again. It was a lesson learned. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to show you how that works, uh, how simple it is. And hopefully it's something that you, you can go off and stop at Walmart and buy uh, the components you need for maybe five, six bucks. 
Uh, I know that if you buy the heated water bases at, uh, you know, your farm supply store, they run like 30, 40 bucks. So uh, I had one of those once and once it gets wet, it starts to rot out anyway. So I, when I had to throw mine away, I was not going to buy another one for that amount of money. I just thought I could kind of emulate or simulate how that works and, and make it myself. So that's what I did. So at any rate, let me show you this. So this is the small coop and as you can see it's pretty secure I mean there's small gaps I've got my hardware cloth on this side but I have some gaps here with this corrugated roofing and I'm assuming that that's how that weasel got in now right now I just have a hay bale in there because it keeps it dry but uh, I'm thinking that it's somehow I don't even know how it climbed up there, but it seems like that's how it got in. And then right here is the piece of wood that connects to the chicken coop, and somehow a fox managed to break this off and fit through there and carry a chicken out of there. And, all, and, and oh geez, you can still see some of the feathers. So I, I have uh, repaired it and and short it up a little bit but uh, what we do is we just take this piece of wood out and then they can go off into the chicken run uh, right now it's frozen because it's middle of winter and uh, so they're just they're staying in there we haven't opened that in a long time and before I go in the coop I just wanted to show you that uh, like I have this trap here and I leave it set and I just set it right there because a lot of animals like the squirrels they'll come along and they'll walk right through it and they're trying to figure out how to get inside the coop and trying to get at the food um, but they just walk right through it and I can just trap them that way in fact I don't think I've ever used any actual bait on this thing I just set it there I make sure it's ready to go and occasionally the chickens will set it off if they're you know free-ranging and they climb up, up or they fly up there and they kind of land on the trap or whatever that they'll set it off and you just reset it but I've actually caught quite a few animals just uh, setting it there with no no food in it so it works pretty well and as you can see I have a uh, wire go uh, electric extension cord going into the coop and that's to power the light bulb oh man these guys have made a mess so here's some of our chickens. Hey, how you doing? Say hello. See, this guy down here, she, well, she, not guy, she is the one who got attacked. And she's actually doing pretty well. She's healed up. She just started laying again. And uh, that's good. That's a good sign. That means that she's not so stressed out anymore. Uh, when they get stressed out, they tend not to lay as many eggs or they just stop altogether. This is our little Sabrite. This is the one who went up on the roof and almost got eaten by an owl, but he managed to save, or be saved. There's our food. It looks like my son needs to come out and do some feeding. I really like these little pans. I find that they are so much easier uh, to manage than the, the feeders where you dump, it in the, dump the feed in the top. Uh, they don't knock it over very much, and at the same time, they don't really spill it. I think the other feeders get spilled all the time, and you lose so much of the food. It just falls on the ground, and uh, it's unfortunate because feed is not exactly free. Now, this is a big mess, and I need to get my son out here to clean this water out. But at any rate, this is our little tin can. Uh, I just put a little light bulb in it. It's just simple. Like I said, it probably cost me a total of like, I don't know, seven or ten dollars. Oh gosh, it's terrible. I'm gonna get that changed. And I see I have a plastic water, and it works perfect. It's cold out, and it, it's just enough heat to keep that thing from freezing over. been happy with that investment. It wasn't much of an investment, but it works, and uh, I'm glad that uh, I could, I made a couple of them. Uh, it, since they were so cheap, I ended up making a couple of them. I have one in each coop, and one's uh, not being used right now, but that's all right. So, 
anyway, uh, like I said before, I, I'm looking to maybe make a new chicken run for the uh, summer or the spring summer. In New Hampshire, we have a tick problem. There's ticks everywhere. They get on the dogs. They get on people. They uh, they're just terrible. And we since we've been letting the chickens free range, we haven't really had tick problems. And well, knock on wood. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to keep the chickens moving around the yard and taking care of the ticks and also protect them from predators. So if I create a chicken run that's made of hardware mesh, uh, hopefully I can figure out a way to make it so that I can move it around the yard a little bit and uh, give them fresh ground to start eating all the bugs and everything. Um, but we'll see. If I, if I start working on it, I'll try to make a video of that. Also, this uh, spring, I'm looking to get some goats. Uh, I haven't had goats before, and so it'll be a new experience, but I've been doing a lot of research, and I think that they, they could be a lot of fun, uh, definitely rewarding, uh, a rewarding endeavor, I guess. So I'm going to probably have to put up fencing. I'm going to have to make a little um, shelter for them, and who knows I'm just gonna kind of wing it uh, I guess that sometimes that's the way you have to do it so if I start building a, sh a shelter or something I'll try to make a video of that and and show how I put up the fencing and everything and show some goats and hopefully that'll be fun for everybody but at any rate uh, uh, thanks for watching this I hope you found it useful uh, leave me a comment and I'd, I'd love to hear from you um, have a good day